evening, we uh, the revival continues. Tomorrow evening at 7 p.m., final night of revival. I want to encourage you to come, amen, to be part of this, amen. Be part of the final night of revival, amen. Let's come. Believe God, amen. Expect a miracle. I want to encourage you to bring somebody, invite someone out, uh, call somebody up, amen. Say, this is the final night of revival. Don't miss it, amen, because once it's over, it's over, amen. When, when not, the revival's not over, amen, but you know what? The, the, the last night of Pastor Sean being here, amen, the revival will continue on in our, in our church, amen, in our lives, amen. So I want to encourage you, amen, to just to bring somebody. You never know who God's really waiting for, amen, who God's waiting for you to bring, amen. So tomorrow evening, uh, 7 p.m., revival, and then an hour before service, um, we come pray, get a hold of God, and then Sunday morning, back to normal, um, 1030 service, in the morning, Sunday morning, then at 6 p.m. that evening, Sunday evening, we have service. An hour before service, we come pray. We get a hold of God. Amen. Uh, th that is all the announcements we do have at this moment. Amen. As, uh, as we come, amen. Um, have our ushers come. Amen. Take up our offering and come forward. Amen. Uh, and, um, first Cor um, Corinthians 16, uh, uh, first of Corinthians uh, 16, 1 says, um, now, now about the collection for God's people, do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside the sum of money in keeping with his income, saving up so that when I come, no collections will be made. I was reading, I came across this portion, amen, of text, and it, it was, um, I was reading a story. And it says also, by the way, you do not give the tithe, you return it back to God. Because it belongs to him, there is a cartoon that shows four frames. The first frame it showed a man who looks at a new car. And the salesman says to him, 10% um, 10 down and low, low payments for 48 months. And the, ad, the man asks, where do I sign? In the second frame, the same man looks for a refrigerator. And the salesman says, nothing down and no interest for 12 months. And again, the man asks, where do I sign? In the third frame, the same man, this time he's looking at a new home. And the salesman says, 10% down. And 10% uh, down and 30 years to pay off. For the third time, the man asked, where do I sign? And in the fourth frame, the man in this, uh, this time, he's talking to his pastor. And the pastor says, would you please sign a commitment card to give God 10% for the next year? And the man in horror, horror replies, what? Tie myself down for 52 weeks. No, sir, the future is too insecure. I won't make a commitment. I, I may not be able to, com to keep. But how do you know we do this in life? I mean, we'll go buy a car. They say, oh, five years, four years. Okay, where do I sign? A house or a lease. So where do I sign? If, you, if, you're, if you're needing an appliance, oh, you, I'm just going to put it down. Hey, you know, that's a commitment we can't keep. Because we don't know what's going to happen. But when it comes to giving to God, amen. You know, you know you're returning your, tithe, returning your tithe back to God, amen, because it already belongs to him. This is already, but this is something that we're obligated, as a Christian, amen, this is what you're obligated to do. Say, for instance, what, what the tithe is, what the tithe means, say, for instance, you had a large pizza, and you're going to share it between you and God, I mean, you're going to, you're going to be all your friends, but first thing you're going to do is you're going to take that pizza, it has ten slices, you're going to look for, you're going to give God his piece first. You're going to give, you're not going to give him the one missing all the pepperonis and the cheese falling off, no, you're going to give him the, the nice biggest piece. With all the pepperonis and all the cheese in place, the piece has cut very nice. God, because this is yours. This is what we do with our tithe. God, I, I'm giving it back to you because this belongs to you. Your tithe belongs to God. Amen. And all we are familiar with the scripture in Luke 6 says, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together. Running over and it will be poured into your bosom with the same measure that you use it. And the same measure will be measured back to you. Can I tell you, whenever you give to God, this is a promise that God says, I will pour back in the same way you give to me. Can I ask you this evening, how are you giving? Are you tithing or are you just giving? Because there's a difference. Because when I first got saved, can I tell you, I was just a giver. I was never a tither. And God was never pouring back into our bosoms. Amen. God was never pressing back and pouring the blessings back into our life until we begin to tithe. Can I ask you this evening, can you trust God this evening, amen, and tithe? Man, tomorrow evening we're taking a love offering for Pastor Sean, amen, as he's come ministered for us all week. I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you this week, amen. And uh, tomorrow, amen. If you're a member of our church, amen, I want to encourage you. Can you make one of the biggest offerings 
One of the biggest love offerings you've ever made. I want to encourage you, because you know what? I'm going to make an offering. I want to encourage you, can you bring an offering tomorrow? Let's let this revival pay for itself. But let's give our tithes to God first. Amen. 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 We got wrong. Brother Mark, pray for all. Dear Lord, we thank you for the privilege of coming in here, Lord. It's not our duty, Lord. It's our privilege. It's an opportunity, Lord, to come to you and serve you and to hear your word being preached, Lord. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We come to your house with gladness. We ask for your mercy and your compassion. We ask for you to bless everyone who came here today and bless the people who could not come, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. They laid him away, 
and delivered him into the hand, uh, delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Jesus, his betrayal. Yes. Then Jesus, his betrayal, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and 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 brought back the the th brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? You see to it. Then, the Bible says, he threw down the, the silver pieces, he threw down the pieces of silver into the temple and departed and went and hung himself. Grab, grab this right here. Here's a man right here that betrays Jesus. Amen. One of his own disciples. He betrayed Jesus. And now that he betrayed Jesus, when he when he seen what they was doing to Jesus, he was remorseful. He he, he, all, he felt bad, didn't he? He felt bad. He oh man. The Bible says he felt remorseful because he didn't he didn't want them to put, put Jesus through that. So he felt bad, man. So he tried to make his wrong right. What did he do? What did he do? He tried to take back the money. Let me take the money back. Maybe I can ease my conscience like that. Maybe they, maybe they won't do it like that. Like he tried to, see, instead of, and that's the problem with a lot of people, instead of coming to Jesus when they mess up, they try to go back to people. He went back. He, see, Judas went back to the wrong ones. Instead of going back to Jesus, instead of going back to Jesus, he went back to the people. The people can't forgive him. The people can't help him. Amen. Only Jesus can help him. Amen. And I truly believe that Jesus would have forgiven him if he came back and said, "I'm sorry. I did it. It was me. I did, I'm sorry." He didn't do that. A lot of times, that's the way it is with a lot of people. You get in church and you mess up so bad you think that, that God won't even forgive you. And you find yourself, you find yourself beating your own self up because you've done so wrong and so bad. And you find yourself being like Judas that you want to literally go and hang yourself. We see here Judas, man, he didn't want, when he seen what happened to Jesus, he was so remorseful. How have you ever been remorseful for something you've done? He was, so, he was hurt, man. He was so remorseful. See, listen to this. Wicked men see little of the consequences of their crime when they commit them. But they must answer for them all. In, full, listen, in the fullest manner, Judas acknowledged to the chief priest that he had sinned and betrayed innocent blood. Mm, mm. Casting the money, casting down the money, Judas departed and went and hung himself. Listen to me. We see here, write this down. Number one, Judas, he knew he was wrong. He knew what he did was wrong. He knew what he did was wrong. See, when you know what you did was wrong, man, it, 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 it takes you to a different level, amen? Amen. Number number two, he tried to make it right. See, we always try to make stuff right when we mess up. He tried to make it right. But the problem was with Judas, he went to the wrong ones. He went to the wrong ones. That's why the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, it says, come to me, all, come to me, all you. That means you. Mm. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest. Did you? You will find rest for your soul. Yes, amen. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. See, God wants to help you out, man. He said, come, come, with, come to me with your drama. Come to me with your problems. Come to me with your issues. Come to me. And I'll help you. 
God wants, God, God wants you to know his love. That you may learn from him. God wants to help you. Amen. Don't you know that? God wants to help you. Why are you running from him? People, listen to me. People are running from God instead of to him. I, I ain't going to that church, man, because if I go to that church, you know, they they, they gonna try to make me try to tell me how to live my life. They gonna judge me. <laughs> come on, come on now. See why you say that? Because I used to say the same thing. Hello. <laughs> you know, oh they go down a bunch of hypocrites. They gonna, that's all they are. All of them like, well, show them how to live for God, don't you? Wow. Show them how to really live for God. You see what I'm saying? I preach this because that's the way I was. But thank God that I got saved. Amen. That my eyes was open, see. This is the problem. This is the real deal, see. People was trying to figure God out. If I can figure him out, then I then I can I can learn how to maneuver myself and all. Well, when you figure it out, please let me know, because I ain't figured him out yet. <laughs> And number three, people are willing, people are not willing, should I say, people are not willing to let go of their old lifestyle. That's right. That's right. I love you, Lord, but I'm going to live like I want to. Excuse me. <laughs> I, you know, I love you and all, but hey, I got to have mine. I got to get my, come on, come on. God said, I don't want you doing that. And I want you to stop that and leave him alone. Who do you think you are? You know, God, God's trying to save you from a heartache and a headache, Amen. and you can't even see it. Amen. You can't even see it. Why? Because you don't want to change. You want to do what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it, and where you want to do it. And then you wonder why your life is like a merry-go-round. See, so my life was like a merry-go-round. So every day, man, go out, party, drink that beer, smoke that joint, hit that crack pot. Every day, every week, work all week, get paid Friday, broke Monday. I done spent all my money, got to borrow money to, put, to buy lunch for the rest of the week. And that was my life, a merry-go-round. Come on. That was my life right there. And I thought, I thought, like, this is what's happening, man. This is what it's all about. <laughs> Duh! Then I would pie. I didn't have nothing, man. Then I have a thing. Get paid, get broke, spend all your money smoking dope and drinking beer, and, and that's cool, you know. You know, you gotta be the cool guy, you know. You gotta flash a little money when you hit me in your house, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Was there done that? Didn't help me at all. But how to get up when you mess up? It's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to do when you mess up and just you can't, you can't, you cannot do it. On your own. Amen. The Bible says a righteous man a falls seven times and he gets back up, shake the dust off his self and go again. Wow. See, when you fall, do you get back up and shake the dust off your feet? Or do you, when you fall, you get up and blame somebody else? Wow. It's because you are this way. It's because you, I, why I did this or why I did that. No, you did it because you wanted to do it. Yeah. Blame nobody else for, for your shortcomings. You did it because you wanted to do it. Now, now you want to justify yourself by saying if it was because of you. Hmm. Let's get real now. See, when you mess up, you, you too will have to get up. Amen. Get up! Turn with me to John. John chapter 6, verse 37. The Bible says this. John chapter 6, verse 37. It says, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Listen to Jesus speaking right here. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. This should give us this should give us even more insurance of being welcomed into God's presence and being protected 
by him. Listen to this. Jesus' purpose was to do the will of God, not to satisfy Jesus' human desires. When we follow Jesus, we should have the same passion, the same purpose. Amen? Just like Jesus had the same passion and purpose he had for God, you and I got to have that for him. Luke chapter 1 verse 79 says this. He came to give light to those who sit in darkness of the shadow of death. To guard our feet into the path of peace. To guide our feet into the path of peace. Listen to me. Before you got saved, you walked in darkness. You didn't know where you was going. You know what I'm talking about? But this is what I mean by this. This is what I mean by this. Before I got saved, you know, before we got saved, we would try stuff out, wouldn't we? You know what I'm saying? You try this, you try smoking a little dope here, drinking a little beer here, you know. You do you try all these different things. Or you try every little thing that you can try. You try to get in when you can fit in. Come on now. You would try all these things. Why are you trying stuff? Because you are in darkness. And when you're in darkness, you can't see. So when you can't see, the first thing you start doing is feeling around. You know, because I can't see, man, I'm in dark. So I got to feel around to see where I'm going. You see what I'm saying? So you're feeling around and you're trying all these different things and you're in the darkness and you can't see it because when your eyes are open and you're in the light and you see that that right there ain't working and that right there ain't no good. And I definitely got to leave that alone. Amen. Amen. We got to say that Jesus came to be the light, man, to guide our foot to the peace. Wants to help us. Now, we got to get real here. Everybody know about King David. I mentioned them last night how King David committed adultery with Bathsheba. How he, how he took another man's wife. She had the man killed. Took his wife, had a baby by him. You hear me? No good, dirty dog he was. He was the king, he, and he was saved. He, 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 he was a man after God's own heart. Imagine that. He messed up. So that tells me something. I don't care who you are, everybody can mess up. It's how you do, it's what you do. It's what you do when you mess up. So let's look at King, let's look at David. He messed up with Bashir. He did wrong. Now he's got to get it right. So turn with me to Psalms. Psalms 51. Psalms 51, verse 1, the Bible says this. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitudes of your tender mercy. Blot out my transgressions. You hear? You hear that? He said, he said, then he goes on to say this. He said, wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Verse 3, listen to what he says. He said, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Did you hear that? David is saying, Lord, God, wash me, clean me up, Lord. Lord, I messed up, and Lord, I need your help. I need you to wash me and cleanse me, Lord. My sins are always before me. They're messing with my head, God. God, I'm going crazy. you got to help me. Can you imagine the battle he's going through right here? He was willing, listen to this. He he was willing to admit that he was wrong. Oh, oh, you don't know want from preaching the matter now. He was willing to admit that he was wrong. So let me tell you something. God can never help you if you're not willing to admit that you're wrong. God will never be able to help you if you don't admit that you that you got a problem. I ain't got no problem. Yes, you is the problem to me. You ain't got no problem. But most people, you know, they, they, they are never wrong. They know everything, and they're always right. You got you to admit that you got a problem so that you can fix that problem. If you don't admit that you have a problem, how can you fix it? He admitted, man. He acknowledged his wrong. Mm. 
That's the problem. So many people will not even admit that they're wrong. They won't, oh, I'm not wrong, you're wrong. You're wrong, preacher. That's just your opinion. You see, that, that's the world we live in today. Listen, to another thing, that one thing that David, I, I like this about David. He didn't try to justify his sin. He didn't try to justify himself. I did it because of this. And I thought I, I thought I was doing it. He didn't try to justify it. He asked God to help him. Amen. Now, let's look at the next, the next verse. After he, de after he acknowledged this, this stuff, and he's asking God, the very next verse he says this. In, in verse 4, Psalm 51, verse 4. Against you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. You grab that. He, he, he made it a personal thing now. He said, Lord, against you and you alone, I've done this. He's acknowledged, he's a God, it's not a one thing. It's against you that I messed up. It's you that I did this to God. You see what I'm saying? Verse 5 says this. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my, mom, my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inner parts, and in the hidden parts, you will make me to know wisdom. Oh, in the hidden parts that nobody else don't know about. God knows all things. Amen. Amen. He knows exactly everything about us. He knows our secret sins. He knows it all. Uh -huh. And you know what? You and I ain't going to get away with nothing that we do because God sees it all. Uh -huh. David was crying out, man. He said, you know everything about me, God. I can't hide from you. Listen to this. This is what he says. He said, purge me with his and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. He said, man. Listen to this. Listen to what it says in verse 8. Make me, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. That the bones that you have broken may In other words, what he was saying is, what David was really saying was, David was asking God to help him get through this hard time of brokenness. Help me get through this hard time of brokenness, man. In other words, let me see joy in this, in this time that, that I've done through this brokenness in my life. God, give me some joy. Huh? Now, why was David doing all this? Because, see, David, because of the, 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 because of the, the deal, the sin that he, he did, he could see the death of his child. God took his first son that she had. Can you imagine that? That's tormenting him. You know your son ain't gonna live. And the guilt, the guilt of taking her husband's life. You know, you, can you imagine all these battles that he's going through in this time of brokenness? He's asking God to help him. Listen to what he says in verse 9. He says, hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Oh, my, did you hear that? He said, hide your face, Lord, from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Lord, I don't want you to see me like this no more. Blood all that stuff out, God, Lord, because I know you can. Forgive. In other words, forgive me of all the things I've done wrong, God. Now that he asked him to do all this, see, he's asking him to do all this for a reason, y'all. See, this is how you get up when you, when you mess up. 
Verse 10, he says this. Mm. He says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. He said, Create in me a clean heart, because I, that my heart was wicked and unclean, God. Create in me a clean heart. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. In other words, clean me up, God. I don't want to be this way no more. Clean me up. Clean me up. I did so wrong, man. I messed up. I should have did that. You're right, you deserve that. Clean me up. And listen to what he says in verse 11. He says, Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Clean, clean me up, Lord, that you may be able to use me again. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Because in order for God to use you again, he's got to clean you up. You've got to be clean. God can't, he got to clean you up, man. And David was asked to clean me up again. Clean me up, man. I want to be used again. Listen. David asked God to restore him and to create him a clean heart. Can God restore you tonight? Amen. And is your heart bad that you want him to create you a new heart? Amen. He can do it. Have you messed up that bad? Have you done some wrong and you want to make it right? You can tonight. This is how you get up when you mess up. You confess up. Yes, man. <laughs> huh? Huh? Man. You confess up, man. I was the no good dirty dog. God, I did it. I did that. And everything that comes to me, I deserve it. But Lord, all I ask you is make me right. Give me, make me right. God, clean me up because I don't want to go down this road again. Mm -hmm. You know what? It blows me away. He asked our God that for this reason, y'all. Listen to verse 13. Clean me up, straighten me up. Then, verse 13 says this. Then I will teach, I will, I will teach transgressors your ways Amen. and sinners shall be converted to you. Yeah. Clean me up, Lord. Clean me up. Because when you clean me up, then I can teach somebody else, but I can teach transgressors about you. I can teach them. And they'll know, and they'll be converted to you. That I may teach trans transgressors your way. You know what he said? That he didn't say that I may teach trans trans transgressors my way. He said your ways. Man. Your ways, man. Yeah. Listen to this, he says. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God. The God of my salvation. And my tongue, listen, listen to what he says, my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. Oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. Listen to me. David had to get, listen, and, I, and remember this. David had to get right before God could teach others. He had to get right before he could teach others about God's love. Yes, he had to get right. Yes. See, I, you see people out there trying to tell people how to live for God, they ain't even right. Like a blind leading the blind. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you know, yeah, I've been to church. I know what church is like. I've been, you don't know, you ain't even got a clue. <laughs> Why you say that? It used to be that way. But one thing I can't say, when you want to make it right, when you want to get up when you mess up, 
you got to confess them. And look at this, what it says in John. John chapter 8, verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you what? Free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Come on. When you know the truth, man, it'll set you free, man. Amen. Every time. Yeah. Somebody can lie about you, and you know, you, you know, you, it's like this. Brother, brother. Brother, I heard, I mean, I heard, I heard, man, I heard this and I heard that, and I heard this about you. And you know they true, you be like, <laughs> whatever, dude. <laughs> you don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> you laugh at it. But when it's true, brother, I heard this, you did this, and you did that, and you did this. Oh, they can't say nothing. He's, re he's ready to get out of there. The seats done got hot. Because the truth, boy, one thing about the truth, you can't change it and you can't fix it. It's, the truth is just the truth. Amen. Amen. And that's why we need the truth so it can set us free. See, don't nobody want to hear the truth. Tell me a lie, but don't tell me the truth. Tell me a lie! But don't you, don't you tell me the truth about myself. Because then I know, because when you tell me the truth about myself, now it's a personal thing. Now I got to change because you done told me something that I know is right. Huh? Huh? That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. That's what it says in, in, in uh, turn with me to uh, John. Chapter 8, verse 34, the Bible says this. Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And as slaves does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. Oh, did you hear that? If the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Oh. And I thought about that. And, and I realized, you remember, I remember that when I started, when I got saved and gave my life to Jesus, that, that God set me free. And I was set free indeed. Because because every day I'd go and drink, every day, like clockwork, I, I, I'd get my 40. As soon as I got out of work, I had to get my 40. Oh yeah, straight to the store, get me a 40, you know. Drank that 40 on the way home, you know. You know. Got to, got to get that 40, you know. And I'm drinking that, man. By the time I get home, take a shower, clean up, go find my homeboy, then I go get that blunt, you know. We go, we go get lit up. Then I'll send this thing we're chasing that eight ball. And when we find that, we... And then we walk around like zombies. We done spit up all our money. Don't know where we at. You know, don't know what we're doing, where we're going, but we're going. You see what I'm saying? And so here I am, man. I'm, I'm, I'm jacked up on the floor. But when Jesus set me free, I remember it was just, it was, it was like a light come on. Boy, what in the world are you doing? <laughs> it's like a light come on. Like, I'm not lying. It's like a light come on. Like, bling, I could see that I'm wasting my money, <laughs> my time, my life. Amen. Come on. I remember praying. I said, God, if you're real. I said, make yourself real to me. If you're real. I know what you did for my mama, because my mama was saved, loved God. I've been seeing my mama go through a lot of stuff and God, seeing God do miracles in her life. I said, I know what you did for my, my mama, but do it for me. If, you, if you're real, do it for me. I said, come into my heart, forgive me of my sin, and, and deliver me. And let me tell you something. When I said that prayer, I start crying. I, I could not stop. I'm at my job. I'm at my work. I'm working. I'm at my job. I'm at IBP. Meat packing company. You know, my meat coming at me, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm crying and working at the same time. And I lift my hands up, man. At the beginning, and I bring up. I'm lifting my hands up, crying. The whole boy's looking at me like I'm crazy. I could not stop crying. For 15 minutes, I'm crying like a baby. People looking at me crazy, what's wrong with you? Nothing, nothing. I couldn't stop crying. But let me tell you something. From that point on, 
I never hit another crack pipe, never drunk another 40, oh. never smoked another oh. blunt. Amen. Been delivered and set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh. I was never the same. My homeboys freaked out. Come on, man, let's go. I said, man, I'm done. I said, I gave my life to Jesus. I'm done. I ain't drunk a beer, smoked a joint, hit a crack pipe in over 30 years. Amen. <clears throat> Set free. I said, when I turned that, when I turned 21, I was going to turn the clubs up. When I turned 21, never went in there. Got saved when I was 20. Amen. I was going to the clubs when I was 20 already, so, you know, 21, I just would have been illegal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Set free by the blood of Jesus. Let me tell you something. Sin. Sin has a way of enslaving us, controlling us, dominating us, and dictating our actions. Jesus can set you free from this slavery that keeps you from becoming the person God created you to be. If sin is restraining, mastering, enslaving you, Jesus can break its power over your life. Just like he did it on mine. Will you let him? Will you let him deceive you? Because let me tell you something. There's no devil in hell. No devil in hell can stop you from coming to Jesus. When you mess up, get up. How do you get up? You get your heart right with God. David got it right with God. David acknowledged his He admitted, you know what, I messed up God. I, I, he prayed, God, take this from me, cleanse me, make, wash me thoroughly. No, thoroughly, that means don't miss nothing. Amen. Wash me thoroughly, man. You know, <laughs> not just, okay, you done. Wash me thoroughly. I don't want you to miss nothing. Can God do that for you today? You messed up? It's time to get up. It's time to get up. But I've done so much wrong, and who haven't? But you don't know. I, I may not, but God does. And if God is willing to forgive you, then won't you forgive yourself? See, that's the problem with most people. Most people don't want to forgive themselves. And that's why you stay in bondage, because you don't want to forgive your own self. You do yourself bad, you ever let anybody else do you. Don't, don't, don't cheat yourself of the blessings of God. God wants to help you. But acknowledge God, I got a, I got a problem. And God, you got, I'm going to give it to you because I can't carry this load no more. This burden is weighing me down and I don't want it no more, God. And I'm going to lay it at your hands. I'm going to put it in your hands. And I'm going to give this, give this to you. When you do that, oh, let me tell you something. There will be something in your life that will change, that will blow your mind. You will never be the same again in the name of Jesus because the Bible says, who the Son sets free is free indeed. Come on. Amen. You got to accept that. But let me ask you something. Do you believe that? Mm -hmm. That's the big question. Do you believe that? Oh, yeah, I hear you. I hear you preaching. Yeah, no. But do you believe it? That's the problem with a lot of people. Oh, preach. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. But don't believe nothing I'm saying. Mm -hmm. then, then they wonder why they got an attitude. You see what I'm saying? You know what? If you believe it, you can have it. It's yours. You can be set free. You can be delivered. I, I said, God, if you're real, make yourself real to me. When he did, I was never the same. Amen. Are you tired of being sick and tired? Mm -hmm. Are you tired of pretending like everything is all right? Huh? Are you tired of being sick and tired, man? God has set you free. Some people got to hit rock bottom before they realize, you know what, I, I, I need to do something about this. Yes. Don't, get, don't hit rock bottom. You, you start coming to church right now and get saved, give your life to Jesus, and change, man, for the good. But in order to do that, you got to let some things go. I, when I got saved, I had to let some things go. I stopped hanging around my old friends. What? Yeah. I, I, I found new friends. They're, they, they're saved. One's going to help me serve God. 
One's going to tell me, you know what? That's wrong. Don't do that, bro. That's not right. One's going to help me be a better man. You see what I'm saying? Because who you hang around, that's the way you're going to be. It's, it's like, if you hang, if a dog hang around a dog and got fleas, guess what's going to happen? Oh, he's going to get fleas too. Oh, I'm putting with you know, but it's like it's like a drunk going to the bar. I, 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 I'm just going to hang out with my friends. Yeah, right. <laughs> it won't be long. You'll be drinking with your friends again. Yeah. That, so I had to separate myself. I had to separate myself from my old friends. And then and once I got stronger in God, then I began to go and witness to them. One by one by one. And then when I witnessed to him, you know, I, I thought, these are guys that I would fight for. You know what? These were my homies. But when I started witnessing to them, it's like they started running from me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm like, what's up, man? I thought we were homies, man. We've been doing each other all our lives, man. Well, well, now the devil began to mess with my head. Now the devil tells me that she said you got saved, you lost all your friends. So now I'm tripping. I'm like, I don't understand this guy. I get saved, I get my life changed, and I have my friends don't want to have nothing to do with me. And so I'm freaking out. So I talked talk to my mom. You know, I said, Mother, I just want to, can I ask you something? She said, yeah. She said, she said, yeah, baby. I said, Mother, why is it that my friends don't want to hang around me no more because I gave my life to Jesus? And she looked at me and said, oh, baby. She said, they're just respecting your decision. God. They're just respecting your decisions. They're still your friends, but they, they're just staying away from you because they ain't ready to get to serve God. And, and they can respect your decisions so you can stay saved. Amen. And I was like, stinking devil. Because yeah. I was, I was I, you know, I didn't know. And I kept preaching to him. And I had some idea six months, you'll be back with us. <laughs> six months go by, I'm still preaching. I give you six years. Six years go by. I'm still preaching. <laughs> now they see me. So have some friends come up to me, weep and cry. Man, look, I want what you got. Say, so I ain't got nothing but Jesus, bro. Amen. I ain't got nothing. But, I, I am nobody. It is Jesus who you need. I said, I'm nobody, man. Only Jesus can change me, and only Jesus can change you. I can't change you. I can't help you, but Jesus can. Amen. I give no glory to myself. I said, I'm nothing. And Jesus is the one that you need. Give your life to Jesus. I had some of my friends give their lives to Jesus. You see what I'm saying? Because I kept living for God. I didn't let nothing stop me. I got it right. You, 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 let me tell you something. When you mess up, you can get up. Give your life to Jesus. If you messed up, get up. Quit beating yourself down. Let Jesus help you. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. The presence of God. Amen. You're here this evening. You're not saved. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you want to know him. I want to give you an opportunity to know him for yourself tonight. There's been things going on in your life and you and you know, you know, God's been dealing with you. He's been tugging at your heart. It ain't no coincidence that you're here tonight. God sees and knows all. And tonight is your night. You hear you're not saved. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want you to do me a favor tonight. I want you to raise your hand and say, this me, I'm not saved. I don't know Jesus as my Lord said. I know of him, but I don't know him. Is that you? Raise your hand, front to back, side to side. You're not raising it to me. I'm nobody. But raise it to God. Give God a chance. You've been doing what you want to do all your life. Where has it gotten you? Are you happy? Or are you tired of being sick and tired? He loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his only son to die for you. In spite of all the wrong that you have done, he loved you anyway. Give him a chance now. Give him a chance to show your love to him. If that's you, raise your hand, front to back, side to side. 
Let God help you. Raise your hand. You don't raise it to me. You raise it to God. Come on. Come on. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Now, if we, when you was in school and you knew the answer, you would raise your hand. Now, I'm letting you know Jesus is the answer. Is that you? Front to back, side to side. I want to change it over. You hear? You backslid. You know what you need to do. You've been running. And God is dealing with you to get it right. Is that you? Raise your hand. Say, it's me, God. Yes, amen. I see those hands. Anyone else? Anyone else? You can put them right back down. Anyone else? Anyone else? I need to get my heart right, man. God, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Anyone else? Front to back, side to side. I, I see that hand. Anyone else? Anyone else? Let God help. Let go and let God tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's you. Those that raise your hand, I want you to look at me. Did you mean that, my brother? Would you come? I want to pray with you. Did you mean that? Would you mean that? Would you come? I want to pray with you. Come. I'm going to say a simple prayer. Come, please. I want to say a simple prayer. Come. 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 I just want you to repeat this prayer. Okay. Repeat this prayer. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died for me and rose on the third day. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, I pray, God, for these precious people. God, I pray for my brother, God. I pray for my sister, God. I pray, Lord, let your hand be upon them, my brother, God, Lord. Lord, that you would touch them, God. Lord, that you would give them the strength, God. Lord, as they come before you, God, and surrender their all, God, help them to love you and serve you with all it is within them, God. We thank you for your faithfulness, your love, and your grace. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God. Lord, that you, God, would give us strength, God. In the name of Jesus, we love you, we thank you, in Jesus' name, amen, and amen, hallelujah. Saints of God, I'm going to open these altars up for you this evening. I want you to come, come, say, you know what, if I mess up, I'm, I'm going to get up, I'm not going to give up, I'm going to get up, I'm going to get it right, come on, these altars are open, you come, come on, these altars are open, you come, you come be busy with God, you come, let God help you, I messed up, but I'm not going to give up, I'm going to get it right with God, these altars are open, you come, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, come on. Come on, these altars open. You come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, my God. Lord, you're so worthy. You're so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you glory. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, for your love, for your grace and your mercy on our lives, God. Lord, it was you that heard our cry in the midst of darkness, God. It was you, Lord, Lord, that set us free from the chains of bondage. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We love you. We glorify your name, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, my God. You're so worthy, so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, my God.
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're so worthy to be praised, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, for your love and your grace and your mercy, God, that you have shown us, Lord. In these times, God, of brokenness, God, it's been you, God. Lord, those times that we can feel like we was all alone, it was your footprints in the sand that carried us through through the trials and the, through, through the hard times of life. And God, we're so grateful, so thankful, God, Lord. Lord, that you heard our cry in the midst of darkness, God. Lord, that you healed our broken hearts, God. Lord, that you delivered us and set us free, God. Pulled us out of the miry clay, God, and set our feet up on a rock. And Lord, we thank you for your love, for your grace, and for your mercy, God. In Jesus, Jesus' precious name. Amen. We serve a good God. Amen. Mm. We'll tell you something. Just because you mess up, that don't mean you got to give up. David messed up, man. He did wrong. He, now, how many of you ever killed somebody? David killed some people. <clears throat> Committed adultery. Stole a man's wife. You talking about bad. Ain't none of y'all did nothing that bad. And if you did, if you did, God will forgive you too. God will forgive you too. But you got to ask him to. You got to confess that you got the problem. You got to acknowledge it. Man, I need you, God. I need you. Let me ask you something, young lady. Are you saved? Have you, have you accepted Jesus? Would you pray with me? Can I pray with you? Yeah. Would you stand up? As I'm preaching this, God is all over you. I was all over you. You sitting there and, and, and you torn. It's like a, a wrestling was taking place. You got to let go and let God. And it's got to be God the way. Quit trying to figure God out and just love him. If you can't do things your way, it's got to be God's way. Okay? If you do that, God's going to help you. Okay? I want you to go up to me and say, Lord Jesus, Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died for me and rose on the third day. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, I pray right now for my sister, God. Lord, as she's confessed her sins before you, I pray, God, give her that peace that surpasses all understanding, God. Lord, give her joy unspeakable, God. Lord, we thank you, God. Lord, for all that you're doing and going to do. Touch her, God, right now from the top of her soul to the top of her head to the bottom of her soul. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory. The blood of Jesus makes her whole in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Let's give God a clap of Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, ain't God good. Amen. 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 Before we leave tonight, can I have everyone come to these altars? Can I have everyone come to these altars before we leave tonight? For he's Lord. You know that? All right. Praise God. Listen to me. Tomorrow night is the last night. If everybody brings somebody, boy, look at him. We got a Holy Ghost time. I encourage you, bring somebody. My saying is, you got to tie them, tow them, trick them, or feed them. <laughs> Whatever you got to do to get them here.